Hello, my name is Commander Kevin Ray, and I am the commanding officer of USS Savannah's Blue Crew. In preparation for our ship's upcoming commissioning ceremony, it is my pleasure to welcome you aboard for a virtual tour. Savannah was built in Mobile, Alabama, and will be homeported in San Diego, California. She is the sixth ship to bear her namesake and is built as a fast, agile, mission-focused platform designed to operate in the littoral. The crew is ready and excited to share with you some details of the Navy's newest and finest warship. Enjoy your tour. I'm Electrician's May, second class Jagger CK from Vallejo, California, and I'm standing in the Mission Bay, the largest interior space of the ship. The idea of an LCS is to be modular platform, and in the space, we can fit the surface warfare, mine warfare, or anti-submarine warfare mission packet to better help us complete our mission. The mission bay also provides access to the ship's main engineering spaces. Down in our engine room, we have two gas turbine engines and two diesel engines that propel four controlled water-propelled jets. USS Savannah is capable of producing 80,000 tons of horsepower. Hi, I'm Bosa's mate, Seaman Martinez. I'm here in front of our boat locker for our seven meter rib. Our seven meter rib is a seven meter boat. It is named the Brown Thrasher and it is used for search and rescue efforts and man overboard purposes. Bosa's mate is one of the oldest jobs in the Navy. Um, we do going from line handling to refueling at sea, to mooring and docking into different ports, including foreign and international and national. I'm Damage Patrolman, First Class Petty Officer, Anthony Harris from San Diego, California. Behind me is one of our three vital repair lockers which holds all of our damage control equipment, which is essential to Savannah's survivability. In this locker, we have equipment that is used to combat fires, flooding, structural damage, and also other casualties. Damage control is an all-hands effort, and we train tirelessly to make sure that we can perform when we need to and be ready for the fight. Hi, I'm Sia King. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama, and I'm the leading petty officer of the Food Service Division here on board USS Savannah. Each day we feed about 70 people about 200 meals per day, all delicious and nutritious meals, and we serve everyone from the same mess and serving line, all the way from the captain down to the lowest ranking personnel on board. I'm Hospital Corpsman First Class Alexander. I'm from Topeka, Kansas. I am the Senior Medical Department Representative and Independent Duty Corpsman on board USS Savannah. And right now we're standing in medical. Over here I have my BDS battalion dressing station where I provide emergency care for the crew um, and also my IDC response bagging if I need to respond to any medical emergencies on board the ship. And over here we have my mini lab. Um, I'm able to run basic laboratory tests and maintain all my health programs. Uh, I'm ET2 Van Sanford. I'm from Cicero, New York. Uh, I'm standing on the ship's 11,100 square foot flight deck where we're capable of landing helicopters, uh, B-22 Ospreys, and AAVs. I'm also a member of the ship's flight deck crash and salvage team where we make sure that the helicopters are safe while they're taking off and landing. I am Gunner's Mate First Class, Andrew Davis. And behind me is the Mark 110 57mm main gun. It's capable of firing 220 rounds a minute, and it has six different capabilities uh, between air targets, surface targets, and land targets. We can operate the gun from the bridge, or we can operate it locally underneath the gun mount in the gun equipment room. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Junior Grade Donald Parrott. I'm from Norfolk, Virginia, and I'm the ship's navigator on board. Here we're sitting at the uh, steering control units. Uh, as you can see, unlike most ships, we don't have a standard helm. It's a minimally manned crew. We only have two bridge watch standards, a junior officer to the deck and an officer to the deck, similar to a pilot, co-pilot seen in uh, commercial aircraft. Hi, I'm 
I'm Lieutenant Junior Grade Audrey Brandon from Lima, Ohio. I'm the ship's electronic materials officer on board. I'm one of three officers of the deck. Our unique steering system allows us to control each water jet independently, allowing for tight, high-speed maneuvers and even making us capable of being able to turn in place. Hello, I am Command Senior Chief Rodmel Aleman, the Command Senior Enlisted Leader on board. Savannah is named in honor of the city of Savannah, the oldest city in the great state of Georgia. Following delivery and commissioning, Savannah will sail to California to be home ported in San Diego. I want to thank you for coming on board and learning about our ship. Have a fine Navy day. Booyah! Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to beautiful Brunswick, Georgia, and the commissioning of USS Savannah, LCS 28. I am Commander Dan Sleds, the ship's executive officer. It is my privilege to be your master of ceremonies today. In keeping with the Georgia Department of Health guidelines and in the interest of keeping our crew and guests safe, please maintain physical distancing and safe mask wearing protocols at all times during today's ceremony. We welcome those of us in person and our friends and family as they participate in today's event from the safety of their homes. We are here today to commission the sixth ship of the line to proudly bear the name Savannah. The first USS Savannah was a coastal galley that served in the US Navy from 1799 to 1802. Savannah was one of a number of small vessels authorized by an act of Congress approved for May 1798 to be used as naval militia training craft and for harbor defense. The Savannah class was designed by Joshua Humphreys, the father of America's Navy. She was built at Savannah, Georgia by John Patterson and was placed in service on 20 March 1799 with Captain John F. Randolph in command. The galleys were placed under the immediate command of Major General Charles C. Pinckney on 19 April 1799. She was sold out of service in February 1802. The second USS Savannah, a frigate, was begun in 1820 at the New York Navy Yard but remained on the stocks until 5 May 1842 when she was launched. She was one of nine frigates to be built from a prototype design by naval architect William Doty. Savannah, with Captain Andrew Fitzhugh in command, joined the Pacific Squadron as flagship in 1844. As the prospect of war with Mexico became imminent, the squadron moved into position off the California coast. On 7 July 1846, the squadron captured Monterey without firing a shot. She served as flagship for the Pacific Squadron again from 1849 to 52. Repairs at Norfolk, Virginia, took her into 1853, and on 9 August of that year, she sailed for a three-year cruise on the Brazil station. In 1857, she was reduced to a 24-gun sloop of war. She then served as flagship for the home squadron on the east coast of Mexico during 1859 and 1860. USS Savannah, USS Saratoga, and two charter steamers fought the small battle of Anton Lazardo in 1860. Two armed merchant vessels were captured by the Americans after they redeemed pirates by the Mexican government. With the outbreak of the American Civil War in 1861, Savannah was deployed off the coast of Georgia, where she shared in the capture of two Confederate prizes, the schooner E.J. Waterman and the ship Cheshire. On 11 February 1862, Savannah was taken out of active service and placed in use as an instruction and practice ship at the United States Naval Academy. In 1870, after conducting her last training cruise to England and France, she was laid up at the Norfolk Navy Yard. She remained there until sold in 1883. The third, USS Savannah, was a submarine tender in the United States Navy in World War I and the years after. She was launched 18 April 1899 as a German commercial freighter Saxonia, but was seized by the United States in 1917 and renamed Savannah. In 1933, the ship was renamed USS AS-8 to allow the Brooklyn-class light cruiser USS Savannah to have the Savannah name. That cruiser, CL-42, was the fourth ship to bear the name of the hostess city of the South. She served in World War II in the Atlantic and Mediterranean theaters of operation. In 1941, Savannah conducted neutrality patrols and wartime patrols in the Atlantic and Caribbean, and in November of 1942, supported the invasion of French North Africa in Operation Torch. In 1943, she sought German supporting blockade runners off the east coast of South America and supported the Allied landings on Sicily and at Salerno. On 11 September 1943, a German radio controlled Fritz X Glide bomb caused extensive damage aboard and serious damage to Savannah requiring emergency repairs in Malta 
and permanent repairs at the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard. After repairs and upgrades, she served in the task force that carried President Roosevelt to the Yalta Conference in early 1945. For her service in World War II, she was awarded three battle stars. Savannah was decommissioned on 3 February 1947. The fifth U.S. Savannah, SS Savannah AOR-4, was a Wichita class for punishment oiler of the United States Navy. She was commissioned on December 5, 1970, Captain Bernard P. Williams, Jr. in command. In October of 1970, she reported to the Sixth Fleet and operated in task group 60.1. By the end of the year, she had replenished 178 ships. Savannah continued to operate with the Sixth Fleet in the Mediterranean until early March 1972. On 9 March, she headed west for Norfolk and arrived there eight days later. Her stay in the United States, however, was cut short by the demands of the Vietnam War. On 25 April, she left the Chesapeake Bay and four days later, transited the Panama Canal. Savannah arrived in Subic Bay, Philippines on 20 May and began a five month tour replenishing the fleet along the coast of Vietnam. She made six line swings to the Gulf of Tonkin during this time. Each swing was punctuated by a four to six day loadout period in Subic Bay. Savannah departed Subic Bay on 5 November, bound for Norfolk. She transited the Panama Canal on 4 December and arrived at Norfolk on the 8th. Savannah operated out of Norfolk along the Atlantic seaboard in the Caribbean for almost all of 1973. On 3 December 1973, she again headed eastward to join the 6th Fleet in the Mediterranean. From 12 December until late May 1974, she supported units of the 6th Fleet in the Mediterranean, and on 3 June 1974, she returned to Norfolk. Savannah was back in the Mediterranean in 1975, supporting the USS John F. Kennedy, CV-67. From December 1976 to, to August 1977, the ship was laid up at the Brooklyn Navy Yard for repairs and modifications. The ship visited the Brooklyn Navy Yard again in 1980, which saw the installation of defensive weapon systems. From December 1991 to June 1992, the ship deployed to the Mediterranean Sea and Indian Ocean with the USS America CV-66 Carrier Group. From August 1993 to February 1994, the ship deployed to the Mediterranean Sea, including a trip with the USS America Carrier Group through the Suez Canal to the Indian Ocean on 1 November 1993 in support of United Nations operations in Somalia. She was awarded one battle star and a meritorious unit citation for her service in Vietnam. She was decommissioned on 28 July 1995. We are delighted to have several members of her crew with us today. Among them, her last commanding officer, retired U.S. Navy Rear Admiral Bob Biesel. Admiral Biesel will assist in setting our first watch. Would all former Savannah shipmates please stand and be recognized. Thank you for your service. At this time, we ask all veterans to please stand and be recognized. Thank you all for your service. Our ceremony today is a time-honored tradition that began with the commissioning of our first warship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, Thousands of ships have undergone the transformation from silent hulls to fully alive warships. Our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation among you and ready to bring our ship alive. In just a few moments, the band will render honors to the Honorable Earl L. Buddy Carter. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, the presentation of colors, and our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests, Ms. Patricia Jovich, Chairperson, USS Savannah Commissioning Committee. Ms. Julie Isaacs Mitchell, our Matron of Honor. Captain Tom Nichols, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy retired, our ceremony chaplain. Captain Robert A. Gold, United States Navy, Littoral Combat Ship Program Manager. Captain Jack Fay, United States Navy, Commander, Littoral Combat Ship Squadron One. Captain Nathan Schneider, United States Navy, 
Supervisor of Shipbuilding, Gulf Coast. Rear Admiral Bob Beasel, United States Navy, retired. Our long glass presenter. Mr. Larry Ryder, Vice President, Business Development and External Relations, Austell, USA. Rear Admiral Casey Moten, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Unmanned and Small Combatants. Vice Admiral Carl Chebby, United States Navy, Commander, Naval Air Systems Command. The Honorable Cosby Johnson, Mayor, City of Brunswick, Georgia. The Honorable Van Johnson, Mayor, City of Savannah, Georgia. The Honorable Meredith Berger, performing the duties of the Undersecretary of the Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsor, Mrs. Diane Davidson Isaacson, escorted today by Senior Chief Rod Mel J. Aliman, USS Savannah Command Senior Chief. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Buddy Carter, United States Representative, State of Georgia, 1st District, escorted today by Commander Kevin Ray, United States Navy, Savannah's prospective commanding officer. Ladies and gentlemen, honors to the Honorable Buddy Carter. Advance the colors. Platform, hands. Tire the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Nichols will now deliver the invocation. Will you be with me in a spirit of prayer? Eternal and everlasting God, we have gathered today to officially commission the littoral combat ship 28 and proclaim her as the USS Savannah, the sixth Navy vessel to bear the proud name of a city so deeply embedded 
in our nation's history. And so we come asking that the spirit of all the men and women of our Navy who have served on ships that go down to the sea will fill the hearts and souls of each crew member of this new ship. May the courage and commitment of those who have come before now be vested in those who on this day receive the mantle of leadership for this ship. Grant them your wisdom to complement their competence. Walk with them upon the waters of conflict as surely as you watch over them in the calm seas of peace. Bestow upon their leaders the will, the ability, and the courage to lead boldly so that the nation that raised them for this time will be forever proud of them and eternally thankful for their role in keeping us safe from all who would do us harm. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Nichols. We would like to thank the U.S. Navy Band Southeast and the Savannah State University NROTC Color Guard for their support this morning. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's Company, parade, press. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Cosby Johnson. Good morning. I would like to say first off is whoever it is in the crowd that brought the cold weather, we're going to sing you back fairly quickly. Uh, I, I am imagining when I think about today uh, the, the words that we find in Isaiah when God asks, who shall I send? And Isaiah responds, here I am, Lord, send me. That is the mission that is before everyone who serves in our armed forces, and we are thankful today that this city, that our city, can be a part of it. But even more so, to have Mrs. Isaacson be a part of this ceremony really connects and intertwines the understanding of what service means, because Senator Isaacson represented that to every single corner of this entire state. So we are even more thankful for her presence and the work of Senator Isaacson and the city that you are in today thanks him as well for his service. It is so important right now to understand that the city of Brunswick was also a place that built ships that went out to service. They were a part of this country's esteemed history in protecting our country for everything that we stand for. And so today, from our city, we say more than welcome. We say thank you to you. And we also say thank you for coming to our city, a city where liberty has set sail. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Larry Ryder. Thank you, Commander Sledge. Good morning. Mayor, I just want to let you know we didn't bring this down from D.C., so <laughs> someone else is to blame for the weather. Today I have the honor of representing the 3,000 shipbuilders of Austell, USA, our teammates, and our team of suppliers across the country. All of them played a key part in building this great ship and continue to support our nation as a vital part of the defense industrial team. Mrs. Isaacson, Representative Carter, Secretary Berger, Mayor Johnson, Mayor Van Johnson, Admiral Chibi, and most importantly today, Commander Ray and the crew of the future USS Savannah, your families and distinguished guests. As the builder of this great Navy ship, we've been part of every stage of the USS Savannah's construction, starting with the first cut of metal in the summer of 2017. Her sponsor, Mrs. Isaacson, has been with us to celebrate each major milestone from the keel length ceremony in September 2019 and the christening in August of 2020. That socially distanced christening makes today's ceremony even more special since we are finally, to, finally able to gather together to celebrate this important event with Mrs. Isaacson and the crew of the Savannah. Also, USA was proud to deliver this warship to the Navy in June of last year. While we were sad to see her leave Mobile, Alabama, we watched with great pride as Savannah's crew joins her sister ships in sailing the world seas, flying our flag throughout the globe. It has been a privilege working with our Navy teammates, 
We value our long and deep relationship with Rear Admiral Moten, Captain Gold, Captain Schneider, and their teams who helped bring the Savannah to life. I also want to recognize another important part of our shipbuilding team, our valued supplier base. Without that team, composed of hundreds of suppliers throughout the country, we would not be able to build this ship. The Savannah was built with the help of 14 suppliers here in Georgia, including Par Marine, located right here in Brunswick. Thank you, Secretary Berger and the United States Navy team. We value our relationship with the Navy, and as a member of our vital shipbuilding industrial base, we look forward to designing, constructing, and delivering more of these great ships for decades to come. Captain Ray, you and your crew and those who will follow in your footsteps on USS Savannah will always be part of the Austell shipbuilding family. And we'll watch proudly as a result of our joint efforts, this awesome combat ship sails the oceans of the world, protecting our nation's freedom. I know members of our Austell family are watching with pride today. These are the best shipbuilders in America. Our workforce is highly skilled and deeply patriotic. These skilled builders are key to maintaining our industrial base that's so vital to our nation. We take pride in delivering affordable, quality, highly capable ships on time and on budget, and we're ready to build more. Commander Ray, when you and your crew sail the world's oceans in the coming years, the Austell team will be ready to support you anytime, anywhere. You'll see our team when you sail into San Diego, Singapore, and everywhere in between. We look forward to seeing the USS Savannah sailing alongside our sister ships, protecting our independence and our freedom. We have built you a great ship, and we couldn't be more proud to see you and your crew sail away. Fair winds and following seas to you and your crew. May God bless and watch over the USS Savannah and all her sail on her. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryder. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Van Johnson. Good morning to Senator John Ossoff and Senator Dr. Raphael Warnock in their absence, Representative Buddy Carter, Secretary Berger, uh, to our sponsor, the beloved Diane Isaacson and our matron, uh, Ms. Mitchell, to the Department of Defense, the Navy, the Navy League of Savannah, the Commissioning Committee, the Georgia Ports Authority, uh, represented by Jamie McCurry today, Commander Ray. I'm joined here today also by our City Manager, Jay Melder, and our Chatham County Commissioner, Adot Whiteley. We are so happy because it's Savannah Day today in Brunswick. And we certainly want to thank Mayor Cosby Johnson, Johnson for his hospitality and his kindness to us as we had the maneuver to make sure that we kept our ports open and viable. It is my great pleasure to have the opportunity to be here as the mayor of Savannah uh, to, this, to this great occasion, the commissioning of the USS Savannah, the sixth Navy vessel to bear the beloved name and blessed name of the mother city of Georgia. It cannot be understated the importance of this day, the significance of this vessel, the importance of the company that built it, the strategic and operational necessity that our Navy remains the premier maritime force in the world. Therefore, in addition to having the finest men and women to serve, they deserve a premier vessel to serve upon. I'm sure we could all agree on that. We are looking so forward to seeing this ship uh, coming across the Savannah uh, Harbor, coming across Savannah City Hall. Jamie, we need to make that happen. Secretary Berger, we need your help so that Savannians can see this wonderful vessel and more importantly, the wonderful people that serve upon it. So we offer our blessings to this vessel, those who built it, and those who will serve upon it, we bid you safety, we bid you health, we bid you Godspeed.
May God bless the city of Savannah, and may God bless the USS Savannah. Thank you, Mayor Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Carl Chebby. Good morning. Uh, Representative Carter, Secretary Berger, Mayor Van Johnson, Mayor Johnson, Mrs. Isaacson, Mrs. Mitchell, Rear Admiral Moten, Vice Admiral Fuller, uh, distinguished guests, Secretary Ball, Miss Allison Stiller, veterans, shipbuilders, crew, family, and friends. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. It is truly an honor for, for me to represent our Navy and our CNO, Admiral Mike Gilday, for today's commissioning ceremony of the USS Savannah. I met a lot of folks this morning as we were walking around, and this is, uh, if you've been to a commissioning ceremony, a change of command ceremony, these are a lot like a wedding. So putting this together, there's a lot of folks behind the scenes. I wanna say thank you to everybody who made, this t made, t made today such a successful day. So how about a big round of applause for all those folks. I would also like to thank Austell USA Shipbuilders for their fantastic job delivering this incredible war fighting capability to my left, to your right. They did that ahead of schedule and below cost. Ahead of schedule and below cost. A truly remarkable feat. Your partnership, commitment to the US Navy will enable Savannah to deploy around the world, ensuring our sailors, our sons and daughters, execute their mission and return home safely. Finally, I would like to personally recognize and thank our ship sponsors, Ms. Diana Isaacson, wife of the late former U.S. Senator Johnny Isaacson. Ms. Isaacson understands the importance of military service, being the daughter of a World War II naval aviator and a sister of two brothers who also served. We, all, we are all sorry for your loss and thank you and your family for their service to our country. From right here in Brunswick, Brunswick Georgia, where we sit today, to Savannah, Georgia, and then on to San Diego, California, the ship's home port, the USS Savannah is poised to represent its motto across the globe, not for self, but for others. Today we commission her as an operating force of the US Navy. This ship and her crew will carry on the legacy of five other ships that have also had the honor to bear the name Savannah since 1798. These ships echo the spirit of a city that is steeped in a history of service. They were built of wood, then steel, and now aluminum. They have participated in the Mexican War, the Civil War, World War I, World War II, and the Vietnam War. While the sixth USS Savannah's history has yet to be written, it will undoubtedly be rich in stories of honor, courage, and commitment. Today we live in an era of great power competition, and the USS Savannah will use her unique and advanced capabilities to deter and defeat these threats. She will deploy with advanced capabilities supporting forward presence, maritime security, sea control and deterrence to protect U.S. interests around the globe. She will use her flight deck right to the left here to launch manned and unmanned platforms and she will connect network centers, platforms and weapons to provide unmatched integrated warfighting capability to our fleet. She will bear the name Savannah honorably as did all the other ships who came before her. If those Savannahs could talk, they would spin remarkable stories of battles lost, battles won. They would tell even better stories about what lies ahead. Commander Ray, Skipper, Captain, and to the entire crew of the Savannah, it is time to tell your story. Go forth and make your legacy as you walk in the footsteps of those who have gone before you. And always remember to pay it forward, to do things not for self, but for others. I know you will make the Navy proud, and I thank you and your families, and I want to especially call out the families of our service members who also serve. Thank you for your service to our great country. Thank you again for everybody who made today's ceremony possible and allowed us to celebrate this historic and timeless naval tradition. This is a great day for our Navy and our nation, and a great day for our community to come together to bring this ship to life. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Admiral Chevy. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Meredith Berger. I'm so glad to be in Georgia with you here today on behalf of the Secretary of the Navy. 
There's magic and warmth here. The little less warmth today with this wind. John Barrett captured that in his quick turn classic, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Among other things, is the story of how a New Yorker became enamored with Savannah. A story Savannah Mayor Johnson can relate to. There's a part where Barrett takes a verbal stroll through Georgia, assigning color and character to major cities ending in Savannah. He says, if you go to Atlanta, the first question people ask you is, what's your business? In Macon, they say, where do you go to church? In Augusta, they ask your grandmother's maiden name. But in Savannah, the first question they ask is, what would you like to drink? Today, we celebrate the hostess city of the South, Georgia's oldest city, Savannah. And how wonderful that our host for this celebration in the city of Brunswick, the port city, which has a proud naval and seafaring history all its own that Mayor Johnson told us about. Thank you, Mayor Johnson and the people of Brunswick for your fine Southern hospitality. In my few months on the job, I've learned that celebrating a milestone in a ship's life is one of the best things that I get to do. And few things are more special than the commissioning of a ship. For those who aren't familiar with the key milestones in a ship's life, first comes the keeling. This is the effective birth of the ship when the full frame of the vessel takes shape from stem to stern. Next comes the christening most recognized for its hallmark break in the bottle of champagne on the bow, bringing good luck and safety for the ship and her crew. Then comes a day like today, the commissioning, where the ship joins the fleet. And after a long productive life of service, the ship has a decommissioning. At each of these steps, the talented shipbuilders across the nation, in this case, Austell, as Larry spoke about, are there, keeping the Navy on track to ensure that we add another fine example of American ingenuity to the fleet. It is their skill sets and talents that allow us to continue to build, improve, and modernize our fleet and continue building the right mix of capabilities for the force. Also present at each of these steps, and she's very important, is the ship's sponsor. For the Savannah, of course, that's Miss Diane Isaacson. It is said that the character and spirit of a ship's sponsor serves to enrich, guide, and protect the ship and her crew. And Ms. Isaacson, a hallmark of your presence is that you support and enrich all of those around you. You're a fitting sponsor for a ship whose motto is not for self, but for others. You come from a family steeped in service. You've got Navy in your blood with your father and two brothers serving in the Navy during times of war. And you brought that innate, excuse me, innate sense of service to your own life as well in partnership with your late husband, Johnny, who served this country in the Georgia Air National Guard and in the United States Congress. Together, you have been dedicated to the Savannah, participating in the keeling in 2019 and the christening in 2020. I know it's difficult to be at this milestone without Johnny. And I'm so sorry for that missing piece in this momentous day. But I know he's so well represented here. In Matron of Honor's Julie's warmth, in Kevin and John's kindness, in the staff members who are here today who supported him throughout his long tenure, I can tell 
that he is present here. And I know that the love and attention that you both poured forth in your service together will be captured and carried throughout the lifetime of the Savannah. And so we set that course off in earnest by bringing this beautiful ship into the fleet. Part of that process is an iconic ceremony, manning the ship and bringing her to life. Mrs. Isaacson will give the command. The crew runs towards the ship, their feet pounding on the pavement, their medals hit their chests. The crew joins the ship and sets the heartbeat of the vessel, the cadence of their work. You see the deck light up, electronics whir and sound. It's the start of a lifelong relationship. There's a bit of magic in it, and it's deeply meaningful. We'll ask a lot of the sailors and Marines who will fulfill the nation's missions while they sail aboard the USS Savannah. Today, she joins our fleet, manned and operated by the sailors that you'll see around you. They'll be committed to protecting our way of life, advancing our global security, and safeguarding our economic interests. They'll certainly have their fair share of challenges and adventures, but they'll have a proud affiliation with the city of Savannah. And Mr. Mayor, I'll see what I can do about that request. Perhaps to borrow another line from Barrett, they'll even be able to come down to celebrate some of Savannah's high holy days, like St. Patrick's Day or the Florida Georgia game in the historic district or down on River Street. But for now, they've got some really important work to do. In times of conflict and in times of peace, around the world and around the clock, the Navy and Marine Corps is present, protecting our way of life. And now we have another ship in the fleet that will do just that. What a meaningful day this is for Ms. Isaacson, for the captain and crew, for the city of Savannah. I hope you all are enjoying every single moment of it. Thank you all, and we'll shortly welcome the USS Savannah to the fleet. Thank you, Secretary Berger. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Buddy Carter. Well, good morning. You know, I thought I left this cold weather behind me when I came back from Washington yesterday. Obviously not. Let me thank you all for being here today. All of you honor us with your presence, but I especially want to thank some people that really do need to be thanked, and that is members of the Savannah LCS 28 commissioning team. If you were a member of that team or had anything to do with that, will you please stand or wave so that we can acknowledge you and thank you for all of your work? Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, events like this and that have taken place all week don't just happen. It takes a lot of planning and a lot of work, and we want to thank them for, for their help on this. I also want to thank the city of Brunswick. I want to thank them for hosting us here for the commissioning of the SSS Savannah. How appropriate. And that's what the first district of Georgia is all about. Now, folks, I know you find this hard to believe, but if you're from out of town and under secretary, you'll appreciate this. There are 435 districts in the United States of America, and you happen to be in the very best one right now. The first congressional district of Georgia. Thank you very much for being here. As you've heard before, this ship here today that we are commissioning is the sixth ship to don Savannah's historic name, and how appropriate. The USS Savannah, LCS-28, is the 24th ship of its kind to be commissioned by the Navy. For those of you who didn't have the honor of serving in our military, and I didn't have that honor, my honor is to serve those who do serve in the military, but for those of us who didn't have that honor, the LCS, as you heard earlier, stands for Literal Combat Ship. And it's noted for its agility and its design for its defense. Now, that's important and it's appropriate. Appropriate that this ship that we were told just a little while ago has a top speed of over 40 knots. And that's fast for a ship this size especially. But it's fitting 
that it would find its home in Savannah, a city whose agility has allowed her to be a defining force in the entire scope of American history. For those of you who will remember, General William Sherman, in his famous march to the sea, he, would, he spared the city of Savannah. And by the way, Mr. Mayor, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that General Sherman encamped in the city of Pooler before he embarked on the city of Savannah. As a former mayor of the city of Pooler, that's important for me to note, and I want to make sure you all understand that. But Savannah has proven its agility over the years. And that is important and appropriate, as I say, that this ship would be named for the city of Savannah. It's important to note also, and I want you to make sure that you know this, that the ship's crest, on which you will see many markers that are unique to our capital city and the city of Savannah and to the state of Georgia. First of all, there are gold stars that pay homage to the ship's predecessor, the five USS Savannahs that came before. There are Cherokee Rose, Georgia's state flower, that represents our Native American history. The Boar's Head, that serves as a reminder of Savannah's his history of, hospi of hospitality, one that will continue to be upheld by this ship as we welcome sailors from around the country abroad the USS Savannah. And then, of course, cobblestone streets are a nod to our storied and timely history. The USS Savannah and its beauty and history will now be shared with the world, and that is certainly important. You know, the United States military is, and serving in the military is an inherently selfless act. I want to thank all of those all of our veterans who are here today for your service to our country. I want to thank those who serve in active service as well. I especially want to thank the family members of those who serve. Yours is an important role. You know, as a father and as a grandfather now, the safety of my children, the safety of my grandchildren are ultimately the one thing that I'm very, very concerned with. The one thing that I really concentrate on, it's our military that keeps us safe. Our military that we can thank while they are out in selfless service, making sure that we are safe. If you're a member of our military or active duty, our veteran, or a family member, will you please stand or at least raise your hand so that we can acknowledge you at this time? Thank you for your service to our country. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a historic day. A historic day in the city of Savannah, a historic day in the 1st Congressional District of Georgia, a historic day in our nation as we christen this ship, as it will travel all over the world, representing the hospitality of our great city of Savannah, of our great state, of our great country. Let all of those who serve on this ship always remember that we thank you for your service that we appreciate your service, and that we wish you Godspeed. We wish God's blessings on this ship. We wish God's blessings on those who serve. And we wish God's blessings on the United States of America. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Representative Carter. Representative Carter. Secretary Berger, I'd be honored if you would now place Savannah in commission. On behalf of the Secretary of the Navy and for the President of the United States, 
I hereby place United States ship Savannah in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who shall sail in her. Thank you, Secretary Berger. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. The commission pennant in the professional national navies began to take form late in the 17th century. All ships at that time were sailing ships, and it was often difficult to tell a naval ship from a merchantman. Navies began to adopt long, narrow pennants to be flown by their ships at the main masthead to distinguish themselves from merchant ships. The commission pennant will fly continuously until the ship is decommissioned. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the ship's mast as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying proudly over USS Savannah. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. From Commander, Naval Military Personnel Command, to Commander Kevin Ray, United States Navy, subject, Bupers Order Number 0028 of 01 April 2021. When directed by reporting senior, detach from present duty and report to pre-commissioning unit Savannah as commanding officer. Upon commissioning of USS Savannah, report for duty as commanding officer. Vice Admiral Chevy, United States ship Savannah is in commission and I am in command. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Executive officer, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Off to the deck, set the first watch. Aye, right, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative, and while on watch, is responsible for the safe operation of the ship and crew. The long glass is a traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. We are honored to have the last commanding officer of the 5th USS Savannah, AOR-4, Navy Rear Admiral Retired Bob Beasel, who will pass the long glass to our first officer of the deck, Lieutenant Donald Parrott from Norfolk, Virginia. The petty officer of the watch is Hospital Corpsman First Class Mayella Alexander from Topeka, Kansas. The messenger of the watch is Sergeant Technician Third Class Arthur Flores from McAllen, Texas. And the bosun's mate of the watch is Chief Bosun's Mate Lesbia Butler from Escondido, California. Set the watch on deck, section one. So the watch is set. Very well. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. The spirit of a U.S. Navy warship is in the embodiment of her sponsor. Our sponsor, Ms. Diane Isaacson, christened this ship in Mobile, Alabama on August 29, 2020, and imbued the ship and crew with her indomitable spirit and love. Diane, I'd be honored if you would give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. I want to thank the Navy, the Navy League, and the Commissioning Committee, but most especially I want to thank the officers and crew of the USS Savannah for giving me the honor of serving as her sponsor. I spent some of yesterday afternoon on the ship 
with the crew, listening to them, talking to them, and I am very proud to be sponsor of the Savannah. Thank you. Officers and crew of the USS Savannah, man our ship and bring her to life. gentlemen, the crew of USS Savannah salutes you. We are proud to serve in America's Navy. Savannah, ready to. Will the guests please be seated. Captain, USS Savannah is manned and ready. Very well. Commodore Fay, USS Savannah is manned and ready and reports for duty. Very well. Secretary Berger, request permission to break your flag, ma'am. Executive Officer, break the flag of the Under Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. Quartermaster. Break the flag of the Under Secretary of the Navy. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the flag of the Under Secretary of the Navy is proudly flying over USS Savannah. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Kevin Ray, United States Navy, Commanding Officer of USS Savannah. Ship's Company, parade, rest. Secretary Berger, Vice Admiral Chevy, forgive me, but I'm going to break from tradition. It is often that our Navy has a, it is not often that our Navy has a crewman from a previous namesake ship act as a long glass presenter. Admiral Biesel, the officers and crew of the latest ship to bear the name Savannah would like to formally make you a plank owner on LCS 28. We'd like to do the same for QM2 Clarence Ed West, 
who served on CL-42, who's unfortunately unable to be here today, but he served during World War II on USS Savannah. Sir, please wear this Point Conner ball cap proudly, and we thank you for your legacy you have given to our Navy and our crew. Thank you all for being here today for an incredible milestone in our ship and crew's life. I'd like to recognize the ship's sponsor, Ms. Diane Isaacson, and her daughter, Julie, our matron of honor. Thank you both so much for being here and for your family's support, including the late Senator Johnny Isaacson. I'd also like to recognize Representative Carter and Undersecretary Berger, Mr. Ryder, and all industry partners. Thank you and all your teams for contributing to the production of such a fine warship. Mary Johnson of Savannah and Mary Johnson of Brunswick, thank you both for truly showing the hospitality of your cities. Vice Admiral Chevy, Rear Admiral Montan, thank you for being here representing senior Navy leadership. Commodore Fay, thank you for your mentorship and the support of LCS Ron to bring the ship to life. I'd also like to thank the commissioning committee for their outstanding support to Team Savannah these past months, as well as all other distinguished guests, family, and friends. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to personally thank each of you for being here today and for your continued support. You truly do make a difference. It is an absolute honor to be here as we bring the newest warship into the service of our great nation. A lot of hard work has gone into bringing this ship to life. The builders at Austell and the Naval Sea Systems Command Supervisor of Shipbuilding, Gulf Coast, have worked tirelessly to provide the platform you see before you. The Littoral Combat Ship Training Facility, Surface Warfare Schools Command, and various other training commands have ensured our sailors were ready to take the watch. The LCS Squadron 1 staff provided great assistance throughout every aspect of man, train, and equip to help bring it all together. And lastly, our crew, who spent months between San Diego and Mobile ensuring we were ready and capable to man, navigate, and fight our warship. Speaking of our ship, as every sa good sailor knows, a ship needs a name. One that helps define the culture of the crew. One they can relate to, and one they can be excited about. Savannah is that name for us. In 1733, Savannah became the first city to be established in the last of the 13 colonies. In the years since, they have supported our fine Navy in various ways. Whether it be a namesake, as was true with each of the previous five ships to bear the name USS Savannah, the first of which entered service in the late 1700s. And shipbuilding and repair, as they did starting 1941 when multiple minesweepers and submarine rescue vessels were built at a shipyard along the Savannah River. Or in commissioning fine men and women into service, as the Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps at Savannah State University has been doing since 1971. It was here Captain Donnie Cochran, U.S. Navy retired, accepted his commission. He would later become the first African-American officer to both fly with and command the esteemed Blue Angels. To the city of Savannah, I assure you, the fine men and women of our crew, who I am humbled to lead, represent everything that is great about your city. Pride, patriotism, resiliency, diversity, and hospitality. We will carry your name forward wherever our nation asks us to go, and we will represent you well, not for self, but for others. Thank you. Ship's Company, hut ten, hut. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for the benediction that will be offered by Chaplain Nichols. Let us pray. O oh God of heaven and earth, 
The time has come when this ship must go out into the uncertain seas of our world. These sailors have accepted the responsibility to go from here and to do the work of defending our nation and all that we hold dear. May we, in like manner, accept our responsibility to them, to support them, to honor them, and to care for them, their families, and their successors from this day forward. We ask fair winds and following seas for them, even as we ask safe travel for all who have come to this place on this day to send the USS Savannah into its role in our nation's defense. Perhaps the words of the great hymn are so appropriate for our going forth. Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm hath bound the restless wave, who bids the mighty oceans deep its own appointed limits keep, O oh, hear us as we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. And now may the grace of Almighty God go with us all to our homes, to our families, to our places of duty, and to all that has yet to be written of our lives. This and all of our prayers we lift in your holy name. Amen.